understand that it takes a while to get to democracy. We had 60 years of dictatorship, after which we've had 10 years of democracy now. So I understand that it takes some time, but the idea of democracy is predicated on equality of opportunity. So since 1957, since you've been independent, how do you then justify practices like, what is it? Bhumi Putra, which is affirmative action for a specific part of the society and not the other, because that is not equality of opportunity. Eventually, democracy has been the form of government that has been running successfully for the past 200 years or even more. How do you justify your stance on that? Well, uh, you are talking about Bhumi Putra. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The American Bhumi Putras do not want the Mexican to cross their border. Why? They have a right. They can say what they like. They want to go to your country, they should go. But they erect a, a wall. And now Americans are not being paid their salary. That is the kind of reaction you, you see from great democracies. We are not so great. I'm not satisfied by the answer, by the way. Uh, we'll go to the hand in the front row in the red jacket. Thank you, Prime Minister. Just following up from that last question, it is my understanding that Bhumi Putra isn't a policy against immigrants coming into Malaysia, but rather certain ethnic groups that have historically been in Malaysia for almost centuries. In that situation, how do you still justify the exclusion of certain people? And do you think that this creates a lack of cohesion in Malaysian society when you divide it into Indians, Chinese people, and Malay people? Well, uh, a country has a right to determine who should come, uh, who should uh, not be allowed to come into their country especially to become citizens. But Malaysia was very generous. The Bumiputra, the indigenous people, accepted people who were brought by the British to Malaysia. And we gave them citizenship and they, uh, well, they are not Bumiputras, of course, but that is uh, the right of the Bumiputras to at least uh, secure, secure themselves. You know, uh, if uh, if this uh, well, if your country is uh, accept too many foreigners, what would happen? Supposing there are 1.4 billion Chinese, suddenly a billion of them want to go to to Pakistan, for example. Would the Pakistanis open their door and welcome them? We do. But in Malaysia, we were more generous. We allowed foreign people who were of foreign origin, who are still identify themselves with their countries of origin, to be Malaysians. We are not like Myanmar, where people living in their own country are now declared as uh, non-citizens. We are very open, more, more open than most countries in Europe. And uh, take the hand on the front row. You, sir, on the right. Singapore and Malaysia are again embroiled in an unnecessary and potentially internecine maritime 